Yes, this world is turning Gotta keep on loving And leave all this useless suffering Far behind Hello. What do you say to your children when they hear the kinds of things that are happening to our planet right now? I'm talking about climate change and the impact of global warming specifically. How do we as parents protect our children from becoming overwhelmed with fear and anxiety? We can't shield them from this kind of information anymore because it's everywhere. So many people are talking about it at school, online, on TV. Every week we're surrounded with more and more news about freak weather events that are beyond the normal. Uh, for instance, the Cyclone Sandy, uh, the destruction of Hurricane Katrina, uh, the melting of the ice caps, the rising sea levels, um, longer and longer droughts in Australia, bigger and, and more violent bushfires. Um, there are soaring temperatures. So many nations are breaking records again and again and again in the winter and in the summer. And meantime, every year, the rate of global emissions of carbon and methane keep going up and up and up. There's no doubt about it. Things are getting pretty scary. And there's no hiding the truth from our children because, because it's everywhere. So how do we help them so that their fears don't overwhelm them? In this video, over several parts, I want to explain very simply what makes the difference between fear and trauma. And then I want to offer you a four-step guide to help your children to feel more secure as well as personally empowered in the face of this growing crisis. So, let's look at this. What makes the difference between fear on the one hand and trauma on the other hand? Now, fear is a natural response. It's also a very, very important bodily response because fear is the fuel that makes us able to fight or to flee. It's the element of fight or flight. Now, most of the time fear is, well, shall we say, frightening, but it passes. We get afraid and it, we settle down. We're okay afterwards. When do we call it trauma? Trauma is when fear lingers long after the scary event. For example, we might get intrusive troublesome, persistent thoughts. Um, it's like a scary movie that keeps on replaying in our minds over and over. We might have, for instance, trouble sleeping, uh, recurrent bad dreams, uh, sometimes even physical illness from the stress. We might feel kind of paralyzed, unable to act, um, or irritable, overreactive, or perhaps oversensitive. All of those are potential, just some of the signs of, of fear having moved into trauma. So look, here's a formula to simplify the matter. Trauma equals fear plus helplessness. It might also be this. Trauma equals fear plus aloneness or isolation. Meanwhile, on the other hand, fear and even intense fear is much more likely to resolve when some kind of action is taken our own action or the help from another person. Okay, so when it comes to global warming and its catastrophic effects, escape can be quite tricky. It is global after all. Where are we going to go? There's no place to migrate to right now. The whole world is under the impact. Um, and of course, understandably, it is hard for any of us to help our children with their fears when we see ourselves, or if we see ourselves, as helpless too. Right now, uh, there's so many people around the world who shrug, we shrug our shoulders and we say to ourselves, what can I do? What can I do? I'm just one individual. There's actually a lot you can do, a lot that you can do for your children. And I want to talk to you about that. I want to show you a four step process that you can use um, to help your children deal with the news and the imagery of climate chaos that has already begun. at step one. Validate your children's emotions. That comes first. The 
the first thing to do with a frightened child is to, is to validate their feelings. This means avoiding denial. It means not saying to your child, cheer up, calm down, there's nothing to be afraid of, it's not really that bad. It means not pretending to your child because look, quite often parents try to downplay their children's worries in the hope to help them to let it all go. This usually will backfire. Children can often see very well through your pretense. And if anything, this makes them feel more anxious, more alone with their fears. Trying to put a positive spin on painful, scary things really just blocks the empathy. Now, fear won't settle down until it's validated, until you show your child that you understand why he or she is afraid, or at least that the fear is okay by you, and that you will stand by them. So, of course, the news about these out-of-control weather events are pretty scary for all of us. Why wouldn't we all be a little bit scared right now? So validating your child's emotions is powerful because it helps him or her to feel that most essential thing connected to you. We can all cope with anxiety far better when there is someone out there listening to how we feel. So if and when your children look frightened, this means saying to them, I can see this would seem scary to you right now. No wonder you feel scared. It's okay to feel afraid. And perhaps your child might like a little holding, some, some touch, some physical contact. Okay, so validation of feelings is the first necessary step, but it's not sufficient all by itself. Your child might need something more. Okay, here we are at step two. Step two is about taking protective action. Take action to protect your child in a way that your child can see. As I said earlier, when children have limited ability to act on their own behalf, they very much need to see someone else acting for them. They need to see that we adults care about them enough to take a stand for them. In the case of global warming, our children need us to demonstrate that we will not sit idly by while carbon emissions keep going up around the world every year. So if we want to role model a mature and adult response, then we need to take responsibility irrespective of what other people around the world are doing or failing to do. Instead of just blaming those that don't help in this situation, standing up and taking the initiative. Now, for sure, what we can each do as individuals is limited. And this is important to know. It means the world to our children to see us go all out in their defense, even if we don't succeed at the end. Mum cared enough, dad cared enough to commit themselves on my behalf. So it's our commitment, our persistence, that's what counts to our children. That's what makes them feel that they're important to us. It actually means us taking a look at how we view ourselves. Do we believe that our own voice and our actions can make any difference? Because if we shrug our shoulders and say, what can I possibly do? What how will that make our children feel? As parents then, it's our belief in ourselves that needs to come first. Personally, as a father and as an uncle, I feel I would be betraying the younger members of my family if I don't challenge myself to act decisively and persistently to contribute to planetary healing. This is one of the major reasons why I'm doing this film. So remember, make sure that you let your child see when you're taking action. Let your child see you acting on his behalf or let him or her know about the actions that you have already taken. Let your children know that you are doing your all to protect their future and that you will not let up. Now, you probably already have several ideas of the kinds of actions you can take to add your way to the cleanup of our children's planet. There are tons of things you can do and they all have quite an impact. You probably know so many ideas and I just want to suggest a few right here. Eat less beef. Did you know that as a greenhouse gas, methane from cows is eight times more powerful than CO2? See if you can try to buy locally made products in order to minimize the use of trans <coughs> transportation. Stop using plastic bottles, plastic bags. Use glass.
Recycle. 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 Use only recycled timber. Recycled paper. Recycled everything. Write a letter to your politician. No more carbon. They respond to the pressure. You know what? Why don't you drive the car less? Take more public transport. Meet more people. Or get on your bike. Hey, pst. plant some trees. He loves trees. <laughs> Why don't you grow some of your own fruit? Mm. 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 You flying somewhere? For an extra two bucks, you can fly carbon neutral. Ask your power company to put your home into green, renewable energy. Go on, install solar panels on the roof of your house. Everybody's doing it. Install LED light bulbs. You know what? How about avoid buying a new car altogether? Or if you do, get a hybrid. Better still, uh, look for one of the new electric cars. 100% electric, they're coming on the market. Convert your existing car or van to LPG gas. Better still, to biodiesel. So you can use um, secondhand fish and chip oil. There are many, many more powerful things to do, and the internet is chock a block full of ideas for you. Now, do you want to join millions of other concerned parents to make your voice heard? You know, you don't have to wait four years until you vote. Online petitions are incredibly easy to read, sign, and share with your friends on social media, and they're beginning to get some pretty exciting results around the world. Check out these petition sites. Step three, we're ready for step three, empower your child to act. For any of us, when we act, we start to feel less afraid. This applies to your child too. If you want to, your child to feel personally empowered, help him to engage in some of the activities, like the ones I mentioned earlier. Help your children to feel that they're making their own worthwhile contribution uh, to have an impact on the, on the planet. Invite your children to make their own suggestions so that they feel they have their ideas, their voices heard. When you feel that your child is old enough to understand, show him or her how they can carefully pick online petitions, for instance, to sign, and even to write a letter to a politician. It's not that hard. Uh, I think it has a special impact when it's written by a child in their own language. Can you imagine how uplifting and how empowering it would feel as a child to find that your opinion counts that big? and that you have a political voice. After all, it's their future that we're talking about. Act together as a family, planting trees together, doing your recycling together, etc. Growing food, riding your bicycles to the shops. That can be especially enriching, bonding and fun. And it's getting better. The worst thing about having fear is when we feel all alone with it. Here's step four. I'm going to call it You Are Not Alone. And it's important for you and your child to get that none of us, we're not alone with these concerns. 
I think that we're all most likely to give up, to sink into despair, to feel hopeless when we think we're alone or impossibly outnumbered. It turns out we're not. It's at times like these especially that we need to tap into the vast community of friends that we have around the world. We need to actively look around to find out that there are very, very exciting uh, developments going on um, that we aren't being told in the regular news. When things are looking particularly grim, we all need a pick-me-up. I think we're all moving towards a tipping point with so many individuals, businesses, organizations banding together to bring the fossil fuel era to an end. And your children would feel very vindicated in their efforts if they knew about uh, these things. But I find that most of the good news, well, we need to go hunting for it. Even the most conservative organizations around the world, like the World Bank, they're already saying that we should tax the use of carbon, for example. Even China has introduced the carbon tax uh, to great effect. With today's technology, we can already make electricity more cheaply, more cheaply than using oil, by using wind or solar. Did you know that? In Germany, for instance, their power bills are already starting to go down and down and down because of their increased use of renew renewables. Um, there are electric car refueling stations, for instance, set up all over countries such as Denmark, uh, the Netherlands, in Israel, parts of China, and in Hawaii. Germany already produces a quarter of all its energy from renewables. Portugal is up to 70%, Sweden up to 50%, Iceland, they've gone all the way, 100%. And China is now leading the world in a race for total clean energy. Uh, there's a Swiss team who've designed a, a completely solar plane. They're soon to be flying it all around the world. Um, fully electric cars are starting to pour into the market, such as the Holden Volt, the Tesla, Nissan Leaf, several uh, Renault models, and many more. If you ever feel downhearted about the state of the environment, check into this website, greatnewsnetwork.org. Greatnewsnetwork.org. But I think always the most important thing to do is to connect, to find out what other individuals and groups are doing locally and around the world, and to feel like you are a part of something big, powerful and growing. Invite your children to join this rapidly growing, emerging global consciousness. Perhaps join one of the many organizations like Greenpeace, World Wildlife Fund, and more that galvanize us into an effective and assertive planetary family. Here are some of those online petition sites in case you didn't pick them up earlier. to take to help your children to cope with the scary climate change news. Number one, tell your child that it's okay to be afraid. Offer holding rather than denial or superficial tear-ups. Honor your child's emotions. Step two, show your child that you are taking strong and committed action on his or her behalf. Step three, empower your child also to act. Include your child in planetary healing activities. Show your child things that they can do and find things that you can do together as a family. Have a look at what other people and organizations are doing together and help your child's voices to be heard. Four, keep checking out the good things that people are doing up and standing up for around the world. Join with larger active communities online or locally. Um, you never have to feel that you're alone. The game-changing message is this, together we can do anything. That has been proven to be true over and over and over again through history. Share that message with your children. They will feel empowered, uplifted, protected, and connected with you and the whole human family. Let's think about our children, our grandchildren, and the kind of planet that we want to leave for them. Global warming is not something that we need to accept. Carbon and methane emissions are no longer things that we can't easily replace. Let's stand up together for our children all the way. If you'd like to find out more about my books and courses for parents, teachers and health practitioners, 
please visit my website, ouremotionalhealth.com, our-emotional-health.com, and my blog, hearttoheartparenting.org. As seen in the closing credits. Thank you for listening. Here comes the sun. Here comes the sun.